Yo, I'm pumped, all right? We can't be talking about it like this. And Don't not, talk about it, and be not, about yeah, it. Now I get some training in. So uh, we're gonna do a warm up because yep. we gotta lubricate the joints a little bit. And then uh, we're gonna get after some training. I just wanna have some fun. I wanna get after it. I wanna do an old school underground Zach Evanesh yes. workout. Get some sweat going, man. It's gonna be sick. So that's what we got in store, man. But uh, this gym, like I said, you guys, it's legendary. It has a ton of history. I always love coming because for me, being a gym owner, I do the same thing. I like collecting pieces, and, and and I like you said, there's no dollar worth amount what it is in terms of, of what is meaningful to, to us. What's you the know? story behind right? it? Yeah. The, I always think of the work on those plates, and it just reminds me. I'm like, God, do work. Man. Yeah. God, yeah, do yeah. work. So we're not we're not big uh, fans of fancy, right? We just want grit. We want to get after it, and that's what we're gonna do. All right, so guys, make sure you're subscribed to him, follow him on all his social media, and we're about to crush it, so let's go. Let's go. Let's go, you crazy kids. Can I get some makeup here? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get me makeup. <laughs> That's what we were, guys, we were making sure we we're getting all done up for the studio, because uh, we've got to look good here. I'm sweating. Here at the underground. The yeah, you can't get off, you can't be on here with all that sweat. Yep. Uh, all right, so a lot of you guys asked me about warm-ups, okay, so I figured, Instead of making a video myself, I'm gonna have Coach Zach run us through a warm up yeah. uh, and kind of go over like, who's this for? Why yes. are we doing it? Type of deal. And then uh, this will be our warm up before we get to our training session. Yeah. So Matt Wenning had a great quote that uh, fires me up. That of course I wish I heard you know 20 years ago. I'm 46, and I started training at age 13, so it's 33 years of training. But Matt said this. Listen to this, kids. He said, when you're in your 20s, you want to train like you're in your 40s. So when you're in your 40s, you want to feel like you're in your 20s, which really hits home, especially as I'm a dad. Um, I could still play with my kids, but I remember in like my mid 30s, like doing some of the crazy training I did, I was like, oh, my back is killing me. And you don't ever want to be able to say to your, you know, your kids, you know, dad can't throw the ball with you. Or let's say you're dating somebody and they want to go like whitewater rafting and you're like, no, I can't do that. My shoulder's busted up. You want to be capable. So we're going to do a full body prep. Even if you're doing a upper body day or a lower body day, I like to get the full body work done. And what it does is it lubricates the joints. It gets the blood flow going, which is also not, it's not just great for the body, but it, it builds the mind muscle connection. So even when you're busy, do not skip a warm up or a preparation period. Don't be too busy for it because you'll pay the price. And the other thing it does is it builds muscle because you're going light, you're getting repetition work in, you're getting time under tension. And so if your training session tends to be heavy lifting, you could front load it with high rep work, which is good even if you know Joe is still in his 20s. I am, so you're almost 30, mm -hmm. damn. I could technically be your father if I had kids at a young you could, age. You could. <laughs> <laughs> you could. Father so, Zach. Father Zach here. <laughs> so as you get older, my goal is I want to be able to train forever. You know, I'm 46, but I want to be able to do it forever. So this warm up builds the mind, builds the body. And uh, when you have aches and pains, it kind of, you know, helps reduce and get rid of that stuff. And look, if you're going to push the envelope in training, you will get some bumps and bruises, but this will minimize and reduce it. I never want to say eliminate. There's always a chance of getting hurt. Um, you know, people get their feelings hurt just walking down the street. Not us, though. Not us. Not us. So we're going to go through a warm up. We're going to start with sleds. OK, we got a bunch of different sleds here. We're going to do several exercises for two rounds, possibly three rounds. So let's come down here. You and I will choose two different sleds because the second time through, we'll go through another sled. Meaning, if you're doing a push sled, next set go on a pull sled. So, and also it doesn't have to be heavy. You want it to be easy and light. So uh, I'm gonna start with a pulling sled and I'll do a uh, forwards, backwards. You could probably take, I'd probably take two of them off. I don't know, you're a strong guy. You're a strong kid. <laughs> um, and you know what I've said before is, 
uh, Ben Patrick, knees over toes guys, really focuses on backward sleds. Should I drag but it or push it? I would go, I would do a uh, push only. Okay. You want those arms out. When I do sleds, I go backwards, forwards, lateral. I don't want to do overdo one thing. So I take that conjugate approach of changing the exercises to hit your body from all different angles. And because it's a warm up, you're not going to run it. You're just going to power walk it. And you could power walk it from the balls of your feet or you could pull with the heels, okay. whatever you want. So I'll do a backward sled drag. And then I'll go forwards. And then when you get to the end, you'll just go to the other side and push forwards. Unless you want to pull it back. Either way is good. I like to do sleds in the beginning of a training session and again at the end. So if it's heavy, I'll be on the balls of my feet. But this is not too heavy, so I'm going to pull with my heels, get some hamstring action going. Hamstrings and glutes, get the knee to open up, have a couple knee surgeries. Good. So then after we do a sled, I kind of like move down the gym. So I'll go back extension here or there. I'll let you choose. What would you like? I'll use this. You want to raise that up one or you're good on that? That should be fine. Yeah. Should be good. So you could, the good thing about the elite one is you could go shoulder width or wide. Got a good stretch in the bottom and just a little pause at the top. And we go slow on these, okay? Although some old videos of like Europeans, Russians, weightlifters, you'll see them doing this kind of with a ballistic fashion, but it's a warm up. So we're not starting with explosive work. So you're hitting the hamstrings, the glutes, the low back. You're working the posterior chain, getting the pump going. And I tell you, for athletes, they're weak. I always say, what do they got to work on? Everything they can't see in the mirror. Yeah. Okay. Now, athletes are weak at everything. You know, kids show up, they can't do push-ups. So we got to build them up through this warm-up. So I'm going to go with a little wider stance to just show you guys a different position. And I'm going to get a nice stretch in the bottom and I'm going to pull up with the glutes in the low back. Give a little hold at the top. When we do this at the end of a training session, we might hold a med ball, might attach bands to make it tougher. You can see you could change the tempo. I could go rhythm. Basically, as the warm up goes on, I just pick up the pace of everything. So then we'll go here, we'll do face pulls. Okay, I'll go to mini band, you can take the light band. You're stronger. Okay, and when we pull, we're also gonna pull apart. So don't just pull back. I wanna do a pull apart and back. You can go to the chin or the forehead. And then what we're looking at is not to arch. So you kinda of wanna like stabilize at the trunk. Okay, and I want reps here to be double digits. 10, 15, 20. Got to get a good pump in that upper back. You could do a rhythmic, as long as it's not sloppy. Good. That band will be too heavy, but we'll do multiple angles. So we could do a forward angle where the elbow points at a wall. Just want to pump them out. Hear that elbow? <laughs> we don't even know what it is, but it doesn't hurt, so it's good. Stretch. And then here's another one. This is a favorite one of mine. So we're going to face a uh, wall. And so now you're going to be kind of in like a uh, pile-off press. You're stabilizing the trunk and you're going to go out. So your elbow is out. We're getting shoulder stability, some isometric. Trunk and oblique, you feel like your abs yeah. working there. Yeah. Okay, a lot of people like to say core. I hate that word. <laughs> and then we get the other side. So it's cool, like you start getting a pump going and you're like, all right, man. You start wanting to train. That's why I don't want people to ever skip a warm up because I've noticed that if you skip, sometimes your mind is just not ready to work. And I gotta tell you, um, when I was at the college level, we would train in the mornings pretty early, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. And so if I felt like guys were sore and tired, I didn't go with like a sport type warm up. I went with a bodybuilding warm up. Right. So I would say, okay, dumbbell bench for 20 reps, 10 in, 10 out. Yeah. Then stand up and give me uh, 
10 hammer curls, 10 reverse curls, now do 20 push downs, now do you know 20 split squats. They'd mm -hmm. get a pump going and then you'd notice their mood yeah, elevated. Yeah, yeah. I've done stuff that like maybe wouldn't make sense, but I'd say bench the bar for 20, curl for 20, 15, 10, five, mm -hmm. chest and bicep pump. Now everybody's in a good Ready mood. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yep, so let's uh, go here. We're gonna hit walking lunges. Right. So we're gonna, and we're gonna get those legs working. Long steps, back knee almost touches the ground. So I like to get a full body workout, even if it's upper body day. I might be doing bent over row, so my legs gotta work. You know, you're benching, you're still driving with the legs. So everything gets worked. Every kettlebell. I'm gonna go to 35. What do you want? Uh, do a suitcase carry and a rack walk. Got the 44s in the bottom. Cool. All right, so now this is great for back health. I'm gonna go with suitcase carry first. Shoulders are level. Hold the kettlebell about an inch away. Now try not to lean, just be vertical. So what we're doing is stabilizing that QL, prepping the back for life. Switch hands, hold it out a bit. Could do this with a dumbbell also. Then when we get to the end, we'll rack it, hit a kettlebell rack walk. Switch hands. Okay, you're wearing a watch. Don't smash it. Let's see your rack position. Good. So try to get your wrist straight, get the kettlebell deeper. So stay there. I'm gonna help you out on this. Here you wanna open your hand up for me. Now it's in there. Grab it. Now drop your elbow a little bit. So you want your wrist to be straight. You don't want it to bend. So on the way up, I kind of just slide it in there. Gotcha. Okay, so our abs are locked in. They will lock in naturally, you don't gotta squeeze anything. So I like this, you're starting to work your abs, your back, your trunk. Take it here. It's still, you know, it's still training like a wrestler. It still <laughs> likes to just push the pace. So we'll walk it back. Push-ups, do you know how to do Hindu push-ups, like those old style? If, if show me how so, to do it. So take a wide stance, these were, Start like if you watch any of the Indian wrestlers as they wrestle in a sand pit, off to the back, everybody's doing Hindu push ups, Hindu squats, and rope climbs. Okay. It's like non stop work. So the, the feet are wide. So instead of just doing a dive bomb, I'm going to go under and then I'm going to push back. So it's like going under a fence. I'm going to hold here. I'm going to push the hips back. Yeah. Go under and just push back. So we're getting some hip and back mobility. And you just pick up the pace. So it's just a different style of push-up. I, like I might do a regular push-up, I might do a yoga push-up, and then we'll do a pull-up or recline row. Okay, so a lot of different bars to grab from. What I would say is, if you're always doing pull-ups here, let's go here for a week. Next time, go here. Mm -hmm. The kids, once they're here on the regular, I'll tell them every set is a different grip. So we could go in there as a uh, you know thicker grip. So I'll start in here, and just gotta watch your head. Five reps. Okay, and then I want to do some hanging abs. So the hanging abs opens up that shoulder capsule and it's good for back health. So for your height, Joe, you'll go here. Okay. And then I'll go here. So you're gonna do a knee raise or a leg raise, your choice, and just do them slow. Yep. So I'll sneak these into a training session to decompress the back. And it's good for shoulder health. And then when you're done, just hang a little bit. Then I'll just chill. I'll let those shoulders open up. This is great for shoulder health. 
So I'll tell athletes throughout a training session, we will probably get five times like uh, hanging or doing hanging abs. Okay. So we did that for one round and we'll hit it again. Perfect. All right, All right guys, so now what we're gonna do is move into the second phase of a prep. If you're busy, you could also sneak this in between sets to kind of keep your fitness at a high level. Coach Joe's been posting videos on kind of that reclaiming athleticism because that is a use it or lose it option, especially as you get older. And you know, my crazy mind thinks like this, if the zombies attack, I better fucking be able to do something, okay? <laughs> yes. I should be able to run, yes. fight, and kill. So I actually incorporate some of the stuff that my athletes do, but you also wanna be intelligent enough to know, okay, when you're in your late 30s, mid, late 40s, you may not be doing what you did as a teenager. So you rebuild and adjust accordingly. I think that's also a kind of the tough thing with YouTube is sometimes coaches will blindly copy what they see somebody else do without context. Yeah, so yeah. you wanna be able to think for yourself and say, okay, I can take that aspect, maybe slow it down a little bit, that's appropriate for me or the people I'm training. Mm -hmm. Yep. For sure. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so, uh, you know, I've had several surgeries on this knee that all kind of started going back to days of wrestling and early days of NHB, before they called it MMA. And so I found that as I get older, being stronger, you know, gets me better. When I've had a surgery, I start working around it. And uh, I was telling Joe, I just uh, punish the weakness. I destroy that shit. <laughs> so let's get some easy skips going. This gets your ankles, feet ready. I get the elbows moving a bit. And it's like a low level fly metric. Just get a little hop. We'll go backwards skips and get some hip circles going. Good to open up. And I'll train barefoot, you know, I'm like a hippie. It's hard for me to put on a weightlifting belt. Zombie killing hippie. Zombie killing hippie. All right, and uh, we'll face the wall. We'll carry open nice and easy. We want that chest to face the wall and get the movement going through the hips and the back. We're back. Good. So we're going to do uh, pogo jumps. Fifth one will be a squat landing. We'll take it to the end. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll do some easy bounding. So get some angles. And then we could go back, face pulls, or I like to get a lot of upper back work, pull aparts. So let's get a set of them. We'll go 10 over. Body is straight versus arched. Underhand. We're not killing it. We just leave an inch on each side. And uh, dislocators with the thumbs in. So again, try not to arch. Try to move through the shoulders. We'll do five of those. And good. All right. Yeah, heart rate's up a little bit. Yeah, heart rate's Sweat up. Sweat flowing. And we're talking, so it takes time. Yeah. If you're training alone or with a friend, you know, guy tries to talk to you, say, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Fucking train, man. It's just a joke. It's just but a sometimes, joke. sometimes with your training partner, you gotta go for the throat, okay? Or an eye you gouge. Know? Yeah, you gotta eye gouge. You know, most of the time, yeah, man, it's good, it's good. Then some days, you gotta go Rambo. Every man for himself. Destroy people, okay? Eat the weak. Yeah, that's what I used Eat to do when weak. I was younger. And then I'm like, damn, I think that shit killed my body. <laughs> you know, I tried to kill everything. So we're gonna go over uh, this full body workout that we're gonna do. 
And uh, I like what you're doing. You're incorporating one or two days of that like athletic training. I'm telling you, it's like I equate it to when you were a kid in high school. Let's say you took Spanish or French, but in the summer you didn't speak that language because you're not in school. Come back in September, you forgot how to speak that foreign language. Yep. So the body, the mind, the muscles must be trained on the regular and adults need some yeah. of that power work. You got to do some jump training and throwing. So we're going to do a full body session, which I also like to do uh, once a week. Or if I feel like my athletes are kind of getting away from athleticism, I get rid of kind of that upper lower split, which is great for strength and size. And I go full body mm -hmm. like this yeah. to build athleticism. And, and I guess that being said, no program is ever perfect. You're kind of always missing a little something. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to fill the gaps. So we're gonna go over this training session and we're gonna thrash. Here we go. Let's go, baby. Let's go.